We're about to go in. Yeah! <laughs> to the war pipe. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Hey, man, fam, we are here for a preview of Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Hollywood. We're here to play some games, ride some carts, collect some coins, eat some food prepared by a toadstool. All right, let's go. Oh, my. God. We have taken our first steps into Super Nintendo World. It's a little overwhelming. I'm having a lot of childhood nostalgia of sitting in front of a Nintendo 64 playing Super Mario World and, and I'm I'm not crying, you're crying. I'm crying and I'm not even a Mario person. This is so crazy that they're packing this much amazing? into this space that is Oh, look at Bowser's castle! Okay, well, I just found the cutest thing in Super Mario World. The caution sign is a banana! The caution signs are banana peels, like from Mario Kart. I'm deceased. <laughs> Super Nintendo World is the newest land that has opened in Universal Studios Hollywood. It officially opens February 17th, 2023. Included in the world, there is one attraction, one restaurant. The attraction is Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge, and the restaurant is Toadstool Cafe. It is an incredibly interactive and themed world that revolves around the Nintendo IP or intellectual property. But specifically, what it looks to me with emphasis on the Mario world. In addition to the normal experience of going to Super Nintendo World, you can also interact with an app, the Universal Studios Hollywood app available on your phone pairs with the power bands. They are an additional purchase, about $40 at time of filming, and they unlock a ton of rewritability and gamification of the land. This allows you to punch power blocks, to collect coins, to track your score on a leaderboard, to gain stickers for different achievements throughout the ride, uh, merchandise locations, and other parts of the land, and track your progress against your friends of what you have experienced in the land. You can continue to use this on future visits and gain more and more coins all the time. Those power bands come in six different varieties themed to one of the Mario characters, which begs the question, Alan, which character did you choose for your power band? Toad. Oh, little Toad. Toad yeah. And Molly, which character did you choose for your power band? I'm a girl, so I had to pick Princess Peach. I'm for, just kidding, they have Daisy too, but obviously I picked Peach. <laughs> I was gonna say, for the record, there is a second option. Uh, Daisy is also included. Also boys can pick Peach. Anyone can pick Peach. Peach is for everyone. Uh, peach is for peaches. free. Peaches. Millions of peaches. Peaches for me. Say, Max, yeah. which one did you pick? You've got a big Mario hat on. I know you're a big Mario fan. It, it would be reasonable to consider that I might buy the Mario band, but because I already have a Mario power band from my first visit to Nintendo World, I went today with Mario's bud Yoshi. Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge is an augmented reality ride where you sit upon a Mario Kart and are able to not just steer that Mario Kart, but also throw Koopa shells at other contenders. You will wear a visor that allows you to see other racers on the track, the other Koopas that you're racing against as you race for Team Mario. You'll be able to use paddles on your steering wheel to throw Koopa shells, to knock them back, to ultimately hope to win. It is an incredible mixture of augmented reality effects with physical set pieces, bringing the Mario Kart franchise to life in a very new modern way. The view from atop Bowser's castle is incredible. The amount of sensory overload I'm having is not a small amount. Bowser's castle is so cool. One of the cool things I've noticed in this queue to uh, Mario Kart so far is even though this land has one less attraction than Osaka's. A lot of the queue elements from that second attraction in Japan are in this extended queue. So you actually don't miss out on the Yoshi story art elements, walking through different parts. In Japan, you just go straight into Bowser's Castle and you're there the whole time. This extended queue gives you a really different 
um, view of the world, different elements, different references to other parts of the Mario franchise. How excited are y'all to ride Mario Kart right now? I'm a bit overwhelmed, <laughs> if I'm being honest. I, uh, I'm very excited. I'm also feeling a lot of emotions. It's very, very overwhelming. I'm excited to do it again. It'll be awesome. I am overwhelmed by the land because of how much movement there is. Like, I can't focus anywhere because everything's moving. But as a little behind the scenes friendship story, we've played a lot of Mario Kart we in, have. Our, in our friendship days. Yeah. I didn't grow up playing the Nintendo games as much as these two. I didn't have any game consoles. I had a Game Boy and I mostly played like the Lion King 8-bit <laughs> sure. games, if y'all remember that. So I played Mario Kart, but you know, I mostly associate playing Mario Kart with playing it with y'all as adults in our living room especially when we got those like the real the real, real ones I, I drive I, I, around I, I, yeah. Mario, Mario, Max uh, gave them to Al and I as a housewarming gift so we've like made crazy courses all over our house so yeah. I'm excited this will be a fun one I'm really excited very unique ride and for two folks that have ridden a lot of theme park attractions I'm really excited to see what your takeaways are yeah. seeing this because it's it's definitely a lot to take in as we approach the entrance to Bowser's Castle, I know Max gave an incredible rundown of what the Mario Kart attraction is. I just wanted to add that there is a 40 inch height requirement for this attraction. So I should also note that it is a unique ride vehicle and there is a test vehicle at the front of the attraction that I recommend you try if you're curious before you ride. So it is going to be fun for most of your family. To me, it's starting to look like a must do if just for the queue alone. I also could just be fanboying and that's totally fine. Oh goodness. We've just entered Bowser's Castle. It is incredible my inner child is currently overwhelmed this is so amazing the statue of bowser's this is like my child has just come to life in front of me which is incredible to see it's even on the lanterns i don't know why i immediately went to light fixtures but apparently that's what triggered me there and even the backlit bowser uh symbol here oh my gosh this is so cool i I have so many emotions. So within the queue, you have all of the trophies that you could get across the different Mario Kart games, including this one, which is a nod to Universal. <laughs> Neat. Thank you, Vanna. You also have representation of all the different cups that you could get involved in, which are the different sets of races across Mario Kart. And then a note between Mario and Bowser. I challenge you to a race. Nice. The portrait of Bowser, which is direct from the games. And I can't even begin to process the amount of Easter eggs that are probably in this room. Crazy Eights and Lucky Sevens, Yoshi's Story, walking which isn't walking your bomb mom, Bill Blaster, Bullet Bill, the the King of Speed, the Anatomy of Bullet Bill. I'm dead. I love that. The airship side view, that's incredible. That you see flying above the. Uh, oh. Over here, you've got an exploration of the piranha plant species and the saga of the Mushroom Kingdom, which is eight volumes. How to beat Team Mario. <laughs> Archaeology now, Dry Bones Dune. There's so many Easter eggs in here, it's bananas. Amongst this workshop, we have Bowser's desk. So he's got lunch with Iggy and Roy, Bomb Mom Anatomy. I wonder what these pins are. I'm hoping, this looks like the ravings of a madman or a Bowser. I would agree with you. Cloud Top Weather Almanac. This is insane. Team Bowser rules of the road, play smart, crush Team Mario, win the Golden Cup or else. That seems motivational. What did you think of, of his lab? I'm very much enjoying this, even though I don't know as much about Nintendo. I love Easter eggs, and I could have spent 20 minutes reading all the books in the queue, because they were very funny. And now we're... <gasps> Bullet Bill! We have entered what looks to be a bomb -omb and Bullet Bill creation facility, as well as mechanical Koopas. This doesn't look so good for us. Well, you have all the different races on the security cameras throughout here. Mario Kart Television. This is wild. Thank you.
These are our competition. That's it. I feel like we can take them. More. Ludwig, Whitney, Iggy, Roy, Larry, and Lenny, all named after musicians. I definitely feel like I could take Iggy. Uh-huh. Wendy looks tough. Yeah, she looks tough. I think Roy looks like, uh, looks like, what's that meme on TikTok? Looks like he can kill you, but is a cinnamon roll? Yeah. Yeah. I think Iggy looks like a cinnamon roll, but could kill you. I think that's... Levy. I don't trust him. <laughs> I mean, I don't, look at those eyes. I don't trust him. They're, they're looking all over the place. He's wily. <laughs> Morton looks like he could kill you and... Could kill you. you. If we're doing that beat, yeah. Oh my god! Oh my god! Listen, not to brag, but one of our number held the highest score of the month for about 60 seconds. Yeah, until the next car pulled into the station. That sounds right. <laughs> Congratulations, Max. Oh, it yeah, was not me. Long live. You did great. I you didn't know. even get the 100 requested by you Mario. Did not. But you got 99, and that is close. Close only counts in horse grenades. There you go. Um, but that ride is wild. There's so much happening. Not only is, so I actually didn't think it was a practical set, and then it is a practical set that you're driving through, but the AR, the augmented reality piece, it's so difficult to describe. It's such a unique and individual experience. Yeah, the footage you're seeing is just the practical sets because there was no way to film the augmented reality through our goggles, so I just filmed the practical sets. Um, amazing, huge set pieces, literally feels like you're on Rainbow Road. That's amazing. It went slower than I expected. Yeah. I think I expected it to be like Mario Kart and like zooming, but yeah. it's it's a slower attraction, but I think that's so you can play the game. The focus is really on the interaction, on throwing Koopa shells, on the steering, and not throwing you around to where you could never focus on that. Yeah. It is pretty slow moving. It's not like a thrill ride, it's a game. Yeah. But I mean, even, even still though, like even at the speed you are going, there's so much happening around you yeah. that it's hard to pay attention to any one thing. Really cool. The temperature changed in certain rooms. The water, like, it like felt like you were going through a waterfall at one point, and then it was windy, and you spun around, and it got warm. Like, but Rainbow Road was all my dreams Stellar. come true. Stellar. The music. Ah, oh, so good. It was so cool. An awesome attraction. Tons of rewritability. Oh yeah. Q was really cool. I mean, I I feel like this is a game changer in theme park universe with the uh, augmented reality. And just to double down, the app integration is so cool. Again, like Molly said, the rewritability. There's stickers to get for riding multiple times, for finding secret blocks, for hitting enemies a certain number of times, for collecting so many coins. You're really rewarded for continuing to ride the ride and finding things in the ride. And to take that a step further with the application, you're rewarded to just engage with the land. So. I think that's what we're gonna do is go and engage with the lanes. I've gained seven stamps since the last time I opened the app. Hey! Nice job. Good I job. got a gold stamp screenshot. We put our name on the list at the Toadstool Cafe. They are running a walk up reservation system where they're gonna text us when it's our turn to sit, which I actually love. It made it so that we didn't have to wait in a long line to get food. Now we are waiting to play one of the three key games around the land. So something that's really interesting to this land is that not everything is available to everyone, which I think some people are going to have issue with, but I think it's really fun for the people that are super invested in playing in the land. There are three of these games that have the little key on there. You have to play all three of them, and if you do, only then can you enter the finale in Bowser Jr.'s castle. The first of the key games we are going to be playing is the Goomba Crazy Crank Key Game. And like the name would suggest, you rotate a crank to race a Goomba 
and then get your key? Well, I think you're trying to make the wheel move at the speed the Goomba can't keep up with, ultimately knock him off, defeating the Goomba uh, and earning the key. We do want to defeat it. So what you're saying is I have to crank with vigor. You do. Now, this is of the three different games that you will see to earn the keys, two of them are individual games and one of them is a group game. So this is one of the individual games and then we'll see a group game and an individual game later. I assume you can't lose the games, right? Like, if I waited in the line and I'm going to play the game, I get to go to the next step? Quite literally, the last kid that I just watched did this loss. Wait, I can lose? Yeah. Oh, no. So, be a gamer. Try. It's Gotta time. Try. It's, time to, it's time to get your gamer genes out and, and work at it. I'm ready. This first one's a bit of a warm-up. I think you'll be okay. I'm ready. I will. It's okay. Sometimes you lose. We don't always win at everything. But Alan, we're gonna win all of them here. Yeah, you're. Alan gets one second place on Web Slingers, and suddenly he's yeah. just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I I will win because I don't want to wait in the lines again. Fair. <laughs> that will motivate me to the yeah, victory. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> We got our first key, tastes like victory, and now we have returned to Toadstool Cafe. We got our text. Waited a few minutes and we're greeted by the most adorable Chef Toad. And now we're getting ready to order. It is similar to other restaurants in Universal Orlando, such as the Harry Potter restaurants, where you're going to order up at a counter, pay for your meal, and then they'll give you something, um, I'm assuming some kind of device to put on your table, and they'll bring the food to you. Taking a look-see here at the menu, you've got a couple starters. You've got some cheesy garlic knots shaped like toadstools, a piranha plant caprese salad, a superstar chicken salad with a parmesan crisp like a superstar, very cute, and Yoshi's favorite fruit and veggie salad. And there's some, uh, the croutons are shaped to be like Yoshi eggs. Everything is adorable. For your main meals, you've got two different sandwiches. You've got the Mario burger and the Luigi burger. The Mario burger is bacon, mushroom, and cheese. The Luigi burger is pesto grilled chicken. And then there are fire flour, spaghetti, and meatballs. Flipping our way to the other side, we've got desserts. You've got the question block tiramisu, the Mount Bean Pole cake, and the Princess Peach cupcake. You've got sodas, regular beverages like tea, juice, water, hot cocoa. They do have a collectible sipper that you can purchase here. We also saw it in the merchandise shop, as well as a superstar lemon squash. And then lastly, you've got these two really cute kids meals. There's a Mario mini burger adventure set and the Power Up Spaghetti Marinara. One of my favorite details behind the counters to order at the Toadstool Cafe are the items that they've got on display. We've got the Radish, which first appeared in Super Mario 2. You would pull them out of the ground and throw them at enemies. Of course, we have the Leaf, which will give us the Tanuki suit, the Power Up Mushroom, the Fire Flower, the Yoshi Egg, all of these. It's cool to see them just brought to life. Obviously, we've been seeing them in 2D and 3D um, since the first games came out, but it's cool to see them in a physical form. I'm really loving it. We've made it inside the Toadstool Cafe, and I'm obsessed. <laughs> it's just the little things and the little bits of theming that are just beautiful. I love that the windows look out onto Mushroom Kingdom, and we also get a glimpse into the kitchen, which is cool. Uh, I think Molly said it best when she said she walked by and said it reminded her of Overcooked. So the stress of Overcooked coming to play here in Toadstool Cafe. Uh, it's just the little details, the different wood grains, the Toadstool backing of the chairs, all of the power-ups listed on the ceiling here uh, and the fact that you have toadstool for the lamps as well and warp pipes running throughout the interior I just I, I can't my favorite detail so far is the fact that the banana is on the trash I just like finding the banana to start our toadstool cafe feast I am trying a mocktail this is the one specialty drink on the menu here it is the superstar lemon squash so it's a honey lemon soda with bobas and then it's got little mango cut out jelly things and they're shaped like superstars. 
Ooh. Now, I don't love boba because I don't like the popping in the mouth, but the so soda itself is really delicious. It's definitely sweet because it's honey, but it's a little tart because it's lemon. I would definitely get this again. Despite a dramatic moment with Bowser's airship bombing the kitchen with bullet bills, we still did get our feast here at Toadstool Cafe. So we have the Mario burger here with the little hat. It's the cutest thing ever. The mini Mario Adventure cheeseburger kids set. We have got the Princess Peach cupcake, the Mount Bean pole cake, the Question Block tiramisu, the Fire Flower spaghetti and meatballs, and the Toadstool cheesy garlic knots. Let's -a eat. All right, let's try a Toadstool knot. Fluffy bread. Let me tell you, I don't get a lot of garlic, but I do get a lot of Parmesan and parsley. Let's try it with the uh, marinara. Sandy marinara, a little acidic, a little sweet. Fire flower spaghetti and meatballs, a new offering to Hollywood, not in the previous uh, iteration of this land. Pretty standard spaghetti and meatballs. It tastes exactly what you expect it to be. Whatever you have in your head of what spaghetti and meatballs is, is that. No matter what that is. Maybe not like grandma's, but if like a mid-range spaghetti and meatballs, if that's what you're imagining, like let's imagine like an Olive Garden. If you're family and you're at the Olive Garden enjoying unlimited breadsticks, that is what you should imagine. Here is the Mario burger. It has a hat and a mustache. This is a girthy burger. Listen, let's talk. Well, I'm here in Super Nintendo World because I love the IP. This is just a standard burger. Perhaps something you might find in a, in a bougie high school cafeteria. It's inoffensive, it's gonna fill you up, it's hearty. So that's what you should expect. And I am a child, so I got the kids meal because one, it's adorable. Like, look at this plate. Two, look at this little Mario that I get to keep that's like bounces around your meal and the little flag. And then it comes with a question box cube coin cookie. So a, a full meal here. It's like a standard cheeseburger, no condiments. I'm gonna see if there's ranch in the Mushroom Kingdom. Yeah, it's just a standard quick service burger. I generally think Universal does quick service burgers pretty well, they usually are not dry and have good flavor. Again, I don't think you're coming here because you think the cuisine's gonna be amazing. Two developments in the Mushroom Kingdom, Bowser's back. Um, one, these might be the best quick service fries I've ever had because they're truffly. And two, I have acquired some of the creamy mushroom truffle dressing, which is what goes on one of the salads. And this could be a game changer in the burger development. That's pretty good. It's a little sweet, which I wasn't expecting. Not super mushroomy, but it's nice. They nailed the theming on this food, that's for sure. I'm gonna try the Mount Bean Pole Cake, which is a multi-layered Italian cookie cake with a matcha icing on the top. That is a journey of flavors and textures. So there are layers of cookies that are very different textures each. At the center section, there's almost this like frosting style situation. And I don't get a ton of matcha. It's very much only at the end. But what it does serve to do is it makes it not super sweet, which is a big win because most of the times with these desserts, they're incredibly sweet. This is a dessert that I want to go back and eat more of, but I'm not exactly sure why. For dessert, I'm first going to take a little bite of this cookie that came with my kid's meal. I was expecting lemon. It kind of tastes like an Oreo. It looks like. It's like an Oreo in reverse, where the cookie part's in the middle, and this is the, the cream. It's legitimately delicious, and I feel like they should just sell these. It's also cute. Now, I'm gonna attempt to eat, yeah, try the cookie. <laughs> okay. Why don't they just sell that? I'm also very easily distracted in this restaurant by the toads just like living their lives outside. But I have eaten literally probably hundreds of theme park cupcakes. 
and I couldn't resist it. I don't even really like theme park cupcakes, but look how cute this one is. I couldn't resist it. It's Funfetti, Princess Peach themed. I mean, there is a mountain of frosting on this thing. It's your favorite thing. I love frosting so much. I definitely don't think the cake is the best part. Give me all the buttercream. Here's the thing. I thought that the pink top part of the top would have some kind of filling or something in it. No, that's just a <laughs> brick of frosting. Oh my God. I don't love this much frosting, but I can say it's very good buttercream. It's glittery, which I'm very into. And the Funfetti cake is delicious. So big props for theming on this one. It's a simple, tasty dessert. It's just way too much frosting for me personally but very, very cute. Once again, I will be trying the tiramisu question mark block. Now, this may feel like deja vu to you. Yes, I've already done this on camera, but will it be the same? We're gonna find out together. My review the last time I ate this thousands of, mile away, thousands of miles away from where I am today is that it was mostly Cool Whip. So we'll see if it holds up. I'm gonna take the same approach, try to get straight to the cake. Cute. It's very cute. I love the theming. We got a question mark block with the fire flower popped out. Mario's getting a power up. It's going to be a good day. Let's get in there. Are those cookies? Uh, yeah, they give a little bit of texture. The shortbreads? Yep. Oh, wow. I'll immediately tell you there's a difference. Way less of that all cool whip texture. There's still a little bit of the whipped cream on top, which is to be expected. But the first bite I took in Japan was all whipped cream, and that is not what you get here. There's a very, it, it tastes like tiramisu. It's a quick service version of tiramisu, but compared to my last experience with this dessert, this is hands down better. We finished lunch at the Toadstool Cafe, and it was lovely. I want to point this out because I'm obsessed with the fact that when the thwop guy goes by, it makes it look like sand is scattering under him. I like that detail. Everywhere you look in this land, there's just like things happening. Yeah. I like the stack of Goombas up here, personally. And Yoshi's hanging out up top. We're gonna continue playing around Super Nintendo World, see if we can get some more keys. I've also heard tell of some secret 8-bit characters that you can find. Okay. So we gotta find little M's around and tap them and find the 8-bit characters. We're, we're talking like the classic 8-bit Mario, yeah. Super Mario Brothers on the NES, yeah. Mario, Luigi, Peach, that Bowser. kind of group. Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. we gotta go. All right, taking a peek inside Princess Peach's castle. All right, well that was a little bit of too much vigor. I was too vigorous, too vigorous with my pounding. I found a secret spot. You were very close to the camera there. <laughs> Another secret! We don't know where we're going. We just saw an up arrow, so we followed it. We're on a quest. Cool! Our stairway to nowhere wasn't actually to nowhere at all. It took us to an overlook section where we get to see almost all of Super Nintendo World here. At the same level, it looks like as Bowser's Castle for the Q4 Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge. It's just so much happening. Oh, wow. Hey, Malls, what do you see? Update, 
We have found three of the four 8-bit characters. True. The app says that we have to find Bowser. Yes. The, me the King Koopa himself. And we asked a team member and she said she wouldn't tell us where he is, but that Bowser likes the dark. We, the dark. We've heard that. So, so we got eyes out. Wait. There's we, a Thwomp Cave. I know. I like the Thwomp Cave because of the sand effects. But it's dark in the Thwomp Cave. <laughs> uh, let's check it out. Yeah. We found a secret game. It's a team game based on color. You do great, buddy. We gotta communicate. There's also symbols. So yeah, not totally. Yeah. Right. Exclamation point question. The, the group we just saw play it. They were all. The game is to turn every block the same, and they were doing the opposite. Yeah, they started each side and were flipping them the, the other. Time. Communication is key. A game. A, a game was the foot. It yes. is the foot. Yes. It was a team game we crushed. Obviously, we're gamers. All of us. Every one of these people gamers. is a gamer. How I would describe all of us equally. Right. Time gaming effect. But yeah. because of that, look, we got the Bowser stamp and we got the collect all the 8-bit character stamp. Feeling like the 80s in here, everybody. It's feeling like the 80s. I feel accomplished. Let me tell you, the way that they've gamified this and added this element to the app, it's I, very cool. I, I love it. I wish I lived closer so I could come and just get a bunch of coins. Yeah. Like you could spend all day just hitting boxes and getting coins. It's true. And I love that there's like mysterious places. Like just explore and Here's you'll a find cavern. things. Go inside. There's a warp tunnel. Where's it gonna take you? Totally. It's really fun. The main merchandise location of Super Nintendo World is One Up Factory. Now of course you have front entrance. This is also at the exit of Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge, so you might see it in either one. Pro tip, a lot of this merch is also available throughout Universal Studios Hollywood as well, so if you're in here you miss out on something, you will be able to find a lot of the Nintendo merch throughout other shops in Universal Studios Hollywood, but this is the main merch location. We're going to pop in and see what's around. Speaking of merch, if you forgot to get your power band before you entered into Super Nintendo World and need one of those six power bands, there's actually vending machines to get your favorite character once you're already in here. We actually chose to get our power bands right as we were entering Universal Studios Hollywood. Again, much of this merch is available outside the land. And I would probably suggest that, have it ready, don't have to worry about it, get it prepped before you get here. But in a pinch, if you just need a power band, there are vending machines. Let's check out the merch. We've got character cups, character mug. Also, look how cool this store is. Tons of apparel, including Mario Kart themed things. If you want to dress head to toe Luigi, Mario, Yoshi, or Peach, we got you. How about a Super Mario World lounge fly or just a regular Bowser backpack? There's a player one and player two set. There are so many plushes. I'm talking Q Block, Mario, Luigi, Piranha Plant, Bowser, Yoshi, different Mario, different Luigi, different Yoshi, Toad. My favorite plush, though, is this chef toad that I brought home with me. Another look at that Player One collection. There's a cute little colorful Rainbow Yoshi game. There's little figurines, toys, play sets. Here's some more of that Mario Kart line. Of course, you've also got hats, keychains, stickers, pajamas. There's a cool neon collection featuring Team Bowser. You want to put a no Koopa shells sign in your room? You can because Super Mario Land is where dreams come true. I just learned something very important about the stores here, not only in Super Nintendo World, but in Universal Studios Hollywood in general. I had my eyeballs on a little mug that I hadn't noticed earlier outside of Super Nintendo World, but I didn't want to carry it around. So I asked the team member and he said, they still do package pickup here. And so anything I wanted to buy, they could ship it to the front of the park. It would be there in about two hours. So that's a good note for if you're coming to Hollywood or if you see a bunch of merch in here you want to get and you don't want to carry it around, they could send it to the front of the park. And while you can use the app to track your scores, uh, all of your achievements, your coins, there's also leaderboards throughout the park. Here's Molly's profile where she can check her ranking and scores for the day. Looks like currently Team Peach is in fourth place. Team Daisy is up front in the moment. The ladies are winning.
Here's the daily leaderboard currently. You can scan down, see all those high scores. Just keep on keeping on. Man, those scores are high. Who knows, we're not gonna be able to find Molly in this one, it looks like. And the all-time scores as well. Definitely so these leaderboards that. can give you an idea of what's going on, how folks are different doing, how the team standings are, and you can check your own scores. So if you don't wanna try check it in the app, this is a fun kind of public place to check it as well. Well, that ends our time at Super Nintendo World. Yes, now we were on a limited preview timeline, so we couldn't meet all the characters or play all the games, but you can meet Mario, Luigi, and Princess Peach here. And if you want to see the rest of the key games, check out our video from Universal Studios Japan. This land truly blew me away. It's definitely very small in size and there are some operational kind of slowdowns with these games. But as someone who's a theme park enthusiast, not necessarily a Nintendo enthusiast, I had a great time. It's very kinetic and alive and colorful. And the Mario Kart game is next level as far as the technology goes. I had an awesome time. I gotta say, being a Nintendo fan of this franchise, of Mario, and everything that Nintendo represents for a very, very long time since I was a, a very small child, seeing this come to life is overwhelming in a lot of different ways. It's incredibly emotional. Uh, I love theme parks as well, and I think it was long overdue that Nintendo had theme park representation. And now that it's here, I think with an attraction like Mario Kart Bowser's Ultimate Challenge, like that's gonna, that's gonna change the game. Alan's echoing a lot of the sentiments I had when I first experienced this in Japan. Um, most of the main beats are still here. Most of the, you know, when you walk into Toadstool's Cafe, it feels exactly like Canopio's Cafe. It looks exactly the same. The key games are the same. Uh, the Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge is the same. It's small, it's more compact, but it's also not thousands of miles away, so I'll take that trade off. I also think the gamification of this land is done better than any other land I've ever been to. The ability to collect your coins and play the games and do these kind of side excursions of exploring not tied to the main attraction or restaurant are really fun. So. You don't have to buy the power band. You can come in and ride Mario Kart. You can eat at the cafe. You can meet the characters. But your experience is definitely plussed by getting the power sure. band, and I think it was worth it. 100% recommend. Yeah, absolutely do. I also think that, just as a friendly reminder, it's previews right now. It's opening soon. Have patient pants. Yeah. Pack your patient pants with all these team members. You know, they're learning everything. They're figuring out what works best. It's still in preview stages, so just a couple things took longer than you might expect today, but that might be the case for a while, so just always be friendly. If you like what you saw, please be sure to like and subscribe if you are new and hit that notification bell and follow us on all of our socials. We've got more content coming from Universal Studios Hollywood as well as Disneyland, so stay tuned for that. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. I'm Max. And I'm Alan. And it's been so magical. Bye. Bye. Let's go. Let's go. Clink.